I want to get a thought of uh, Nana uh, Atodadze uh, on, on this. You, you seem to disagree? Well, um, no, I don't uh, really disagree with the point that he's making. But so where is sovereignty? I think that it is very clear in our constitutional, you know, um, under our constitutional mandate that there are three arms of government, legislature, judiciary, and the, the uh, executive. What people do not realize that in this country, under Article 57, the president is the head of state. You see, it is, nobody's mentioned that. He's the head of state head of government, and the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. So that places him a step over everybody else. doesn't mean that he performs the functions of legislature or the judiciary or, for that matter, the, the executive as government. You see, there's a government. He's a head of state, but he's also a head of government. So he's wearing a different cap when he's head of state. He performs an independent function. For the state, you see, the state is made up of the three arms. They are the three arms. So those three arms, they are Siamese twins, you know. They, they, this cannot say he's superior to the other or that is superior to the other. You see, that is it. So equally, you cannot say that the judiciary is superior or has sovereignty over all the other arms. So where do you draw the line? What's that? Where do you draw the line? Well, I'm, just, I'm saying that the line... It's clearly drawn in the Constitution. I'm saying that the head of state is a person who is in the couple. He's the head. You see, below him, we have the judiciary, legislature, and executive. Now, let me tell you something. Judiciary is important because it has a unique function the other arms don't have. The legislature has unique functions which the judiciary cannot perform. So, so the executive of, you know, have been given some unique functions which they perform, which the judiciary cannot perform, or the, the legislature. You understand? The power to make law is vested in the, in the what do you call it, in, in the legislature. The, the enforcement and uh, running of the state is it's not in the judiciary. It's not in the legislature. So you must understand that they are separate but one on the one head, you, okay? Mm. That is our jurisprudence. That's how the, the, the philosophy behind our oppression of the state. We must understand that, you see? But it doesn't mean that the president can override the, the in their judicial functions, they are independent. And so, in the legislature, in the, in the legislative function, their, their actions cannot be impeached. That is our Article 115, my understanding of it. The, 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 the executive, if the executive order, uh, what do you call it, a curfew in Boko, who can overturn that, you see? So I, I just want to just highlight some. And also to say that, um, I don't know whether I can mention quickly, that, you see, uh, my brother, uh, what's my blay, you know, it's my colleague, sorry, uh, is, um, he made a significant statement that this is a storm in a teacup. Did you say that? I did. Yeah, you did. I, I wish you had explained what it was like. So what are we talking about? W what is the function of an MP? He is to be in parliament to deliberate. The legislature is a deliberative forum. That's where you go and fight it out. He has been a speaker before. He knows what's there. It's a rough and, you know, game out there. You must survive. You argue your, you fight your case out there. You win or lose your case within the, the remit of the of, of parliament. That is the essential thing. Now, just, 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 now you have majority leader, you have um, um, minority leader, and all those. These are not constitutional bodies. They are not. Well, the speaker talked about it during that press Well, I'm saying that they are not, but they are very significant. It's very significant to say they are not uh, constitutional bodies. Whether you are a majority leader or not, you have to go to parliament to, to argue your case. You understand? Now, who is a majority leader? The, the, the what do you call it? The standing orders of parliament, you know, sets out who a majority leader. Majority leader, they say, is a, is a, uh, a member of parliament designated by the majority caucus in, uh, uh, as their leader. 
The who is a minority leader is just the those um, the leader who has been designated by the the, the team with the largest, second largest in the in the in the in parliament. But you see, there's another office designated in the standing orders. Uh, my brother can tell you. It's leader of government business. It's there. You see, a leader of government business may not necessarily be the majority leader. In a situation where the, uh, the, the, uh, the parliament, the government, uh, the executive, eh, they don't have sufficient uh, members to constitute majority. They, in effect, have somebody who prosecutes the government business. He's a leader of the government business. So what the point I'm making is that, look, the fact that somebody is sitting here as majority or somebody is sitting here as minority, it's of no consequence, really. It's no, no question. Is it the reason why MPs will not go to uh, the uh, parliament and deal with critical matters of state? But is it obvious that Africa will have titled the fact that you have Alexander Apenyo marking repeatedly telling tell journalists that he saw the majority leader? I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm mm -hmm. telling you, I've, I've given you the legal situation. I said that we have le uh, uh, majority leader, we have minority leader, we also have leader of the government business. When you don't have the numbers, in parliament, you appoint somebody to be the, in charge of government business. It is there. It's a legal situation. You understand? Now, let me tell you something. There's this also thing about sitting, they should be sitting here or sitting there. It's, it's really, I love my so friends. So you think that the MPs are making, you know, a mounting out of a molehill? That's let, what let you're me, saying? Let me tell you something. In sometime 19, 1912, 1913, the U.S. House of Representatives, they used to have sitting behind desks with their names labeled and all that. Before you go to that, extent, no, no, no. Just, just let me make yes a complete no answer. Come on. Now, when, when they face a crisis like this, they decided they will abolish all these names and whatnot. MPs should go to Parliament. When they see a chair, they sit on it. I say, up to today, 120 years thereafter, in the U.S. House of Representatives. It's first come, first step. If you go there, you sit where you sit. So you're so, buttressing what the speaker said earlier, that we are still holding on to the old no, system. More importantly, I'm saying that it is inappropriate for any parliamentarian to go to say, I'm not going to parliament on account of the fact that somebody is sitting on my chair. Are you indirectly criticizing Alexander Penyo marking for his stance? Well, uh, well, the court is the case is in court, but I don't disagree with him. I don't agree with his position. I've told you that the House of Representatives in America, 435 members or so, you understand? When they got to this river, they needed to cross. They took a decision, and we must take a decision. If there's a question of who should sit on the right of the uh, speaker or left, we should abolish it mm -hmm. and just say that go into the, the leadership. You create a table for them to sit on. I'm saying this is actual practice in the House of Representatives. Uh, and I want, to, I want to come to you, Mr. Blay, but I just want to get clarity on what you just said, uh, yeah. uh, Mr. Jaze. I, I know that your preliminary comments suggested that you did not necessarily disagree with what Kofi Bento had said. Yes. But do I also get the understanding that perhaps you believe at this stage any either of the institutions could be overstepping its boundaries? i.e. Parliament or the Supreme Court? Well, well, you know, yes. Uh, but uh, I wouldn't want to make uh, a judgment tonight, you understand, because of the ruling of tomorrow, you understand. I, I don't want to make a judgment of Based tonight. on previous ruling, because the argument is that the Supreme Court shouldn't, shouldn't depart too far from its previous judgment. I mean, um, well, I haven't said that. I just said that, you know, they, they have specific functions. Su uh, the Supreme Court has its functions. The, the legislature has clear functions set out. You understand? And in 115, you know, 116 says you cannot impeach proceedings. What, what does it say exactly? Yes, you know? that what happens in Parliament is a closed book, essentially. Yeah, I've heard the Attorney General, for instance, indicating that that one was only in really relation to freedom of speech. I've heard that some funny story like that, where I say that it shall not, you see, the, there shall be freedom of speech, debate, and proceedings in Parliament, and that freedom shall not be impeached 
question in any court or place out of parliament. And they are saying that, oh, if the, the, the yes, you can't impeach the, the parliamentary uh, proceedings and debate and so, but you can impeach their decision. I mean, what kind of, what's, what's, the, what's the freedom? You know, it's like the joke that you, say you, can, you have freedom to speak, but we can't guarantee you freedom after you've spoken. Where is the freedom? 